Hello, I'm Keith Hilson with the Schmidt Music Trombone Trap, back with another daily practice tip for you. And today I want to talk a little bit about lip trills. This is a topic that a number of folks have commented on saying, hey, can you talk about this? So what is a lip trill? Well, just like you know, so much of what we do, I like to break down those comments to kind of their essence. So the first part is actually the last part, trill. What is a trill? A trill is just a rapid alternation between two notes, right? Very often in Western common practice music, in other words, kind of our typical Western classical music, it's often used as an ornamentation. Very often the notes are adjacent to each other, or at least close to each other, but they don't always have to be. So that's the second part, a trill. The first part is a trill that we're accomplishing through using the lips. Now this is different from, for example, a valved trill or a trill accomplished by a uh, woodwind player where they're using different key combinations. In this case, as brass players, we are accomplishing this trail through the lips, just like a lip slur. And really, they, this is no different than any other lip slur that we do. It just, instead of going between multiple different notes, we're just alternating between two different notes here. And so what that means for us is that we can treat it just like we treat any other lip slur in how we accomplish it and the thought process, how we practice it here. So whenever I'm thinking about lip trails, again, just like any other lip slur, I'm starting off with first air always supporting with the air. We can be doing all kinds of different things with the armature, but if we don't have that air support underneath it to create the sound in the first place, and more importantly, to be able to sustain that vibration, the alternation between those notes, nothing we do here is going to matter. So first thing I'm thinking air support. The second thing I'm doing is I am thinking about keeping everything nice and calm here. I And I'm going to be starting slow, just like with any other lip slur, we want to start slow and even. So for example, um, one of the, the exercises or groups of exercises I love to use are from the Emory Remington warmups. He's got a whole series on lip trills. And I, I love the combination of these. So for example, with the Remington lip trills, we might start off on a B flat um, on top of the staff. And even as I'm getting started, I'm trying to keep things as smooth, as connected, and as even as possible. This evenness is really, really important because as we start to move the tempo up, if we don't have a completely metronomic evenness between those pitches, we're going to get... It's going to be uneven. We're going to have a harder time controlling it. So starting off, air support starting slow with it. And the other big thing that made a difference for me right away, and I've talked about this in previous lip slur videos as well, is what needs to happen with the embouchure. So often when we think about lip slurs, when we think about moving between the registers, we think that there has to be a lot of movement, a lot of change happening with the embouchure. You see a lot of folks, the corners are jumping all over the place, but the thing is to a large extent, that's really not all that necessary. Um, when we're in the, just like we've talked about before, when we're in the lower register, yes, we have to drop the jaw. We want to be slowing down the air. There are other things that have to happen, but especially once we get up to about that F, F in the bass clef staff, B flat on top of the bass clef staff range, the amount of movement that has to happen here, if you watch my corners, the amount of movement that's happening here is really very, very small. My aperture is closing up a little bit, my air is moving faster, but it's really that the air that's making a difference. And the other thing that really, really helps with, for me, with lip slurs and especially with lip trills is allowing the tongue to do more of the work. So when I'm thinking about these lip trills, I'm actually thinking, oi, 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 oi. So you can hear we've got that ah uh, to the e. And when we're moving up to that little bit higher syllable, in other words, the middle of the tongue is moving up, what that's doing is it's helping to increase that air speed. Um, and that's allowing us to more easily transit be to that upper note of the trail. Oy, oy, oy. <laughs> I'm really thinking almost no movement here at all. I'm thinking about that air support. I'm keeping 
that, that air moving through, but I'm really using the, the tongue. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And you can do the same thing through all the different registers. <laughs> And the really, really great thing about that is that the tongue, for most of us, ends up being much more facile. In other words, it's quicker, we have more flexibility with it than if we're trying to move all of the armature here. And so that means that we're going to have more control and we're going to be able to gain better speed with the lip trills here as well. Now, there are a couple of caveats to that. First off, we actually have to be able to play in the register we're trying to do the trill in first in order for it to happen. So if we're trying to do a trill on the eighth partial B flat, but we really don't have a lot of security and confidence with it, we're gonna have a really difficult time getting things to lock in in the first place. The second thing that I've found exceptionally helpful, and this is something that my graduate school professor taught me, is that to get the trill started, we have to have, at least I found, I really have to have the first note really locked in solidly. That serves as kind of the, the set point, the foundation. So when I go to trill, if I don't have the first note, for example, If I'm not set to get that first note started, everything, it, it, it's airy, it's out of focus, it's uneven, but instead, getting that first note to really lock in helps to set the foundation for everything else. And if you're you know, doing lip trills in the extreme, especially lower register, you know, if we're getting between you know, basically larger intervals, you see, I am shifting a little bit more. And even there, it's not so much about changing the shape of the armature. It's really more about opening up the oral cavity to allow that slower, broader airflow that we need to have to get that lower register to really open up the way that we want there. So biggest takeaways from this are keeping that air support going, using that tongue lumbar, and working on that metronach precision, starting slow. Again, if we start off when we're trying to play, it's not gonna do us any good. But if we have that metronome going, and we can slowly build it up, we're gonna have a lot more control. And again, we're gonna be able to control through all of the different tempos. So that way, again, we are dictating as the artist what we want this to sound like versus the technique dictating what we can do with it, right? We always wanna be in the most control possible. So I hope this, you have a few ideas about lip trills that are helpful for you. If you have any other questions or comments, if you have a technique for your lip trills that have proved helpful to you, please feel free to share those in the comments. Um, the other members of our community would love to learn more about that as well. And of course, I invite you to check out our other daily practice tips as well, as well as all of our other videos on our YouTube channel or on our Facebook page, if you're seeing this on Facebook as well. And again, you can check us out on social media. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram. We'd love to see you over there as well. Well, so thank you as always for watching. Happy practicing and please keep making music.